Uh, hi, I'm, I'm Zach. I'm an uh, infectious disease epidemiology student. <laughs> this is, uh, is super exciting to me, but it's probably at least a little bit terrifying to you. It's somewhat terrifying to me. So one of the biggest threats to humanity as we know it is emerging infectious disease. So we're already seeing some of the really terrible effects of Ebola in West Africa, but there is a disease, the flu, which is around every single year around the world. So the flu as we typically perceive it is actually this thing called influenza A. There's a couple of other ones, B and C, and there's a bacterial one that's really a misnomer. But here we're gonna stick to just the flu that you guys know. So the flu's been around for centuries. We've known about it forever. In 1901, you can see here, there was a prize greyhound that died in a major epidemic of canine and equine influenza. And here are the usual suspects. We have the pig, poultry, and really our Kaiser Soze of the usual suspects, <laughs> the waterfowl. We'll get back to him. So Bill Gates actually scooped this talk about two weeks ago. He released a video for Vox Media. And uh, I just want you to know that I wrote this a couple months ago. Uh, and, but it's good to know that great minds think alike. And if Bill Gates is afraid of it, you should be too. So here is the average year. This is actually last year's influenza. So we have the epidemic curve on the left and the age distribution on the right. So that age distribution is showing hospitalizations of primarily the very old and some in the very young, and it's mostly pneumonias. This is what really should scare you the most, and this is the 1918 H1 influenza, which killed a lot of young people, and that's what made it really, really different. And what we've been looking for since are influenzas that have a similar uh, viral pattern to this, things that, that prey on the young people, not just the immunocompromised. And it's, it's pretty scary. So influenza is made up of eight genes, and two of these genes are super important in what you hear about. So hemagglutinin, that's what lets the influenza virus break into your cells, and uh, neuraminidase, which lets them get out, the H and the N. There's two ways influenza evolves. The first is by antigenic drift. This is the standard evolutionary model where it replicates and minor errors are made along the way for each replication, but it replicates so much that these minor errors accrue. And, and the really scary one is this other type called antigenic shift. Now, in those Kaiser Soze waterfowl, uh, the flu virus can break apart into its components and recombine with other flu viruses into these new, emerging, terrifying pandemics that we've seen. 1967 in Hong Kong, 1977 in Russia, and 2009, the return of H1N1 in the United States. Uh, and this is, this is really hard to deal with. These are the last 20 years of new influenza strains. And these red ones, these are the bird flus that you keep hearing about in the news. And they're making inroads, and they're especially making inroads as far as geographic distribution. So scientists try to predict, uh, predict every year what the different strains that are going to be prevalent are. And sometimes they make mistakes, but they try to incorporate those in the vaccines that they release to the public. So sometimes we have mismatches really bad, like in 2008, uh, 2004, and as, as far as the media was concerned last year, but we should keep our eye on the prize that these vaccines are super useful in at least reducing the total number of cases and in reducing hospitalizations among people who are cases. Now, I would be remiss to not mention herd immunity. You have, I think, not only an obligation to yourself but to others to immunize yourself because some people can't get immunized and if you don't get sick, then you're less likely to get them sick. You can't transmit if you're not sick. And to that effect, if you are sick, cover your mouth, make sure that you wash your hands, and do all that sort of standard etiquette that we forget about all the time. Here are some of the treatments. Uh, they are, as far as we're concerned, uh, ineffective in healthy individuals. They are vastly overused and really should be reserved for people who are extremely sick. So if you have a healthy immune system, you really should ride out the flu with cold medicine and, you know, your own will. 
uh, because you don't want to drive drug resistance. And whatever survives, if it's resistant, it will spread to other people. So here's a, a Onion article to top you off. And if I can summarize this, uh, don't be misled by media fear, but there is some things to fear with influenza. Be hygienic and get vaccinated. And thank you very much.